Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our coaching cafe today. Um, we thought we would have a look at setting goals for the new year, and it might look a bit different to what you're thinking, but um, when Bridget and I talked this over, we came up with a bit of a plan. So um, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we meet today and their continuing connection to the land, waters and communities of Australia and the lands from all around the world upon which you might be joining us. We pay our respects to them and their elders past, present and emerging and elders from Indigenous community, communities around the world and for any um, Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islanders or Indigenous people from around the world who are on our session today. So we thought on our agenda today, um, we thought we'd start off with thinking about 2024 because there was some discussion around is it too early to be thinking about 2025 because we're still in the thick of the last quarter of the of the final quarter for 2024 so we thought well let's have a think about this and let's have a look at how we might be able to finish 2024 off in a really strong way and then we thought let's move into thinking about setting yourself up for 2025 and thinking about what that will look like for you and based on our conversations we've been having with clients and in um, uh, in with family and friends and in um, training sessions we're doing, we thought it was worth thinking about prioritising balance and thinking about our goal setting in that way about how do we find the balance um, to finish off 2024 and to set ourselves up for 2025. So as always, our coaching cafe is about creating community and there are amazing coaches on the line and we want to hear from all of you as we're going through. It's about creating a shared learning experience and having thought-provoking conversations. And for all of those of you who are looking for your CCEs, it will be available at the end of the session. I would like to welcome Bridget along today. She's joining me again this week. It's always um, fun to have you with me, Bridget. Thank you, Paula. Lovely to be here. So when we thought about this topic, it was funny when we were setting up the, the coaching cafes and I thought, oh, we'll just look, we'll look at goal setting for 2025 and didn't think anything of it. And then a number of people said, but we haven't finished off 2024 yet and there's so much going on. So how do we make sure we finish off 2024 nice and strong? And and then and are we thinking about the goal setting too early? Um, and with the end of year coming up, this whole idea about prioritizing prioritizing and your balance. And we talk the the um, was uh, the Gen Xs came up with this idea of work life balance. It was something that was coined um, from our generation. But funnily enough, we very rarely have found it. There's a quite a lot of um, a quite a lot of research that says we came up with this idea, but then couldn't figure out how to do it. And it's yeah. actually the the millennials and the next levels down who are actually saying, actually, I want to work. I want work to fit in with my life rather than my life fitting in with work. So we we helped them out, Bridget, is what I'm <laughs> saying. We've given them some some um, we set up a foundation for them. Absolutely, that that, uh, that prompted to think about work life balance and what do you actually make it mean for you rather than that generic work life balance needs to look like this, having that even balance, but uh, but certainly making it work for you in a way that that, that suits. Uh, and I think what you're saying about um, you know jumping into 2025. Uh, so early, we are getting there, of course. I mean, it's it's nearly, uh, we've got perhaps six weeks remaining of the year and you can see Christmas looming and and uh, you think about, oh, I want to get started for, for, you know, for 2025 and we can sort of bypass everything that's going on uh, or we just let it happen to us because we're so focused on, on that new year and, and what we need to achieve without taking into account perhaps what's happening for us at the moment in the thick of things. Um, so yeah, so so focusing our attention there first can be really valuable. Yeah, and Stephen said um, work life integration. Mm. I yeah. I would like to flip that that says life work integration. <laughs> yeah. Just just from that idea that the work is 
the work that we do is about um, allowing us to live the life that we want to live, but the your life is your number one thing. Yes, yes, lovely. Yes. So part of what happened was there was this, um, I was, I was, I went to a, a, um, a lunch on Sunday that was, it was th three of the mums in my uh, mum's group were having 50th birthdays. So we did one giant big celebration um, and we're all sitting at this beautiful long table and I was talking to someone and they were like, oh yes, you know, um, there's lots going on and I'm not sure about this and I just need to get through to Christmas. And I really thought about this just get through to Christmas because it sounds like I just I, if I just tick this box off and we get there, then the world will be a better place mm. or I'll be able to do all the things I wanted to, if I just get through to mm. Christmas. And I actually asked her the question, how do you want to experience your Christmas this year? And she, it was she just looked at me and was like, oh, my God, Paula, you are so right. And I was like, I can't actually be right because I, all I did was ask you a question, but she obviously answered the question in her head based mm. on the question that was asked. Yes. And it really prompted this idea about this, I just need to get to. So when you're in school, I just need to get to that exam or I just need to get to the school holidays. And then you get into work and it's like, I need to get to the end of the financial year. I need to get through the performance reviews. I need to, whatever it is you have to get through is this idea that you're just pushing until you get there. Yeah, if that, that makes sense. And I yeah. found this little meme that I thought um, was really useful that says adult life is a constant cycle of, I just need to get through this week, but it's every week. And if you're running through the, this at this pace, you're going to look like like rabbit here who is is exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think this ties into what we were talking about last week, Paula, with momentum and consistency and checking in with ourselves and really embracing what's happening in the moment rather than just trying to take that big giant leap to the to the next spot and, and you know the collateral damage in the way that they can get in the way if we uh, forget what's going on right now yeah and I think there's an idea too that if I just get to this week or to this item then I can be happy mm. or then I can relax or then I can focus on myself and I think what happens in that space is that if that's how you're rolling then every time you get to went that I need to get to here that you don't actually take that time to focus on yourself because you've got the next I need to get through to moment that's right I, I agree with that and I also think when you do get to there like rabbit you probably that's exactly how you feel um you know that you're feeling absolutely exhausted and you're wanting to enjoy the place that you've come to um and bring your best self to that spot um, through having done it the right way along the, the pathway before you get there. Yeah, and I think that 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 it's not, so if I always think about life as a journey, like there's not a final destination at, at work, you know, if you at work, at those sorts of things, it's not about hitting the final destination. It's about the how you are on the journey. What am I contributing? What? How do I feel about this? It's never, like, life is never going to be all skipping through the daisies and, and happiness, but it's the how do you want to show up every day and, and be a part of that and that if you're just waiting on the I need to get through to the next thing, then you're missing all of those moments in between and that choice factor of how you want to be and what you want to be doing. Yes, absolutely agreed. And so we thought based on this, we would look at what happens What happens when we do get super busy. Now, obviously, this end of, uh, end of year period for people, some people are super busy, some people it winds down. So it's about looking at it from what happens in your end of end of. Um, year process um, and I popped in here the strengths and I like it as the performance zone as well that says 
because, because what tends to happen is as we get busier, as there's all sorts of things that are added to, you want to finalise things before you go on holidays or you have big Christmas celebrations and you've got to fit everything in there or there's, I don't know about anyone else, but with kids there's 20,000 uh, performances that you need to go to and all sorts of things. What can happen is that we start overplaying our strengths or we start moving or, or we start underplaying. If you are slowing down, you might actually slow down so far that you're underplaying your strengths mm. or overplaying it. Or if we think about this from a performance zone, you go into the red section of the performance zone or you come into the, you know, you don't have momentum and so you're not doing the things that you need to do. So I thought this was a good way of, of thinking about that that what happens so if you have strong if your strengths are in that space of of organization this might be where you then suddenly have 16 to-do lists that are not talking to each other or that you're so focused on the to-do lists that you're not having the genuine conversations you need to have with people Mm, yeah, I think that's right. And I think, you know, understanding that green zone and and having real clarity around, well, actually, what are my strengths and how can I apply those strengths to the situation that I'm in now, especially if there is mayhem, if there's a lot going on, if we're preparing and juggling and whatnot to that Christmas period, you know, what are my strengths, what energises me and how can I utilise that to be able to find that version of balance that's going to work to get me to where I need to be so that I'm enjoying the process. So I'm acknowledging my strengths and that when I am shifting into that overplay or that overdrive of doing too much of something that potentially is strong about where your burnout can occur as well, that you're able to recognize it because you're really clear around what your strengths are and what that might look like when you're overplaying those strengths. So checking in and asking yourself, well, what do I need to do to bring myself back into that green zone so that I'm able to operate in a way that's going to bring out my best as I approach that Christmas period? Yeah, and I hadn't thought about it before, Bridget, but I do think that the, the last two topics have just really lent themselves to move into this topic. So we looked at that consistency rather than perfection and, you know, thinking about how do I consistently do things and consistently show up and and um, that I'm working on things every day. So that, for example, you don't say, well, no, I'm not going to do my exercise program today because I'm far too busy. But we know that when, the, when you do the exercise program, that it helps to build that momentum and keep you moving um, to get to, to where you need to go. So it's all they they actually all linked in really beautifully. Oh, they absolutely do. And, and the exercise program is a really good example because the self-confidence that you subliminally sort of digest, if you like, through making a decision and actually going forward with it in terms of your exercise program for the day, what that does for you in terms of your confidence and your energy and how good you're feeling to then continue that momentum to achieve what you want to achieve. Those little things that actually contribute to making a difference as to whether you do or whether you don't get to that end result. Yeah, and sometimes it's the little mouse <laughs> that just is is um, doing lots of things and, and getting them done to build that momentum. And sometimes it's the bigger elephant that we're mm -hmm. plodding along but making sure that we're working on it. So, and, and, you know, we've been thinking about this for ourselves, but it's also the same for the people that we're working for. So with our teams and with our clients and when you can notice someone who is heading into that overplay or the red zone, um, and thinking about what great questions can I ask this person about where they are and how they're feeling and what's happening so that they can make they can make those adjustments for themselves. Absolutely. So the other um, so we thought about thinking about your end of 2024 and thinking about what do you want it to look like and making sure that you're not overplaying your strengths or underplaying or thinking about your performance and not going into that red zone or um, under. And we thought, what's what's one of our really great tools that we can use to help people um, to finish off 2024 really strong and then to set themselves up for 2025 
thinking about balance. And what we came up with was the WADEP model. So Bridget, do you want to take us through this model? Sure. So WADEP is a really lovely little tool that uh, you, you could maybe spend five or 10 minutes on, uh, essentially to spend a little bit longer if you need to, but it's a, a short, sharp, quick tool that is great for self-coaching as well as for coaching others, but particularly for self-coaching uh, if you're feeling like you need to take responsibility for something or you need to be accountable. Uh, perhaps you're procrastinating over something that you need to do. The value of WADEP is that it does hold you to account. So what is it that you, what is it you want here? What do you want? So it's really clear. What's the outcome you're looking for? What's that desired outcome? Uh, getting really clear around that desired outcome, what are you doing about it? What are you actually doing about it to get there? Or is what you're doing taking you in the direction that you want to go? Or what direction are you taking? So you can nail down with that closed question to get that yes or no answer. Is what you're doing getting you to where you need to be? Not really. Or what direction are you taking? Maybe there are some things that are working. Perhaps there are parts that are not. So then it's about evaluating, looking at, well, how's that working for me? You know, which parts are working, which parts are not, or perhaps I haven't been doing anything and I've been procrastinating somewhat. So how's it working for me? Well, clearly it's not. Okay, so what's the plan? How do you plan to proceed now? Now that you're really clear around what you want, what you are or are not doing about that, evaluating how that, that's working and then making a decision around, well, what's the plan? How am I going to move forward on this? So a really nice self-coaching model, but also to, for, for, for others who might be doing overwhelm or getting into that space where they've got a lot going on right now, heading up to Christmas. It just creates that clarity to stop and consider, all right, what do I want here? What am I doing about it? What direction am I taking? What's working? What's not? And given that, what's the plan to proceed? I think the key here too is that it's about making genuine choices for yourself. Mm. And, it, I, and I know all the coaches on the line are going, yes, of course it is, because in coaching it's about accountability and responsibility. But I really love the saying it out loud. This is about making clear choices for yourself about what do you want? What is the picture for how you see your life being? So if we take my friend's example, what experience do you want to have leading up to this Christmas period? Exactly. What do you want to be doing? What do you not want to be doing? And it, I think this in this the W stage, it really gives you that clear picture about what um, what you want what what you want this to look like and it's almost that miracle question in in there too that is the, if you open if you woke up on christmas morning yes. for example and everything at the lead up was exactly what you wanted to it to be what would you have done absolutely the, the beauty of being able to mix and match with our coaching models and tools and getting that really clear outcome because if we allow it just to happen to us and we're going into each day with each day happening to us rather than us making a decision or a choice around how we're going to approach today and what we're going to get out of today so that at the end of the day we can say, that was great, had a great day today, um, you know, I embraced it the way that I expected to, that I wanted to, this went well, this could do with a bit of tweaking tomorrow, but I'm clear around it, I'm aware of it, and it's taking me in the direction that I want to head. Yeah, so we th we thought this would be um, good for a how do you finish off the year, the 2024 year really strong. And it, it doesn't have to take days. It really is just sitting down, having a think about it. But you could also do this with your team. So you could get your team together and say, what is it that we really want to, to finalise before the end of this year? How do we want to be going into that holiday period? Or if you don't have a holiday period, how do we want to finish this off and think and and then you can also do it for heading into 2025. What is your vision for 2025? Absolutely. I think the value of this is, as you say, it's a really great self-coaching tool, but with teams, you know, what is it that we want? And also getting everyone in that team to take some accountability or some direction 
you know, with, with what, what it is that you want so that everyone's working to their strengths and you're applying that, you know, talking about strengths in the previous slide. So what are, what are each of us going to do to get what we want and how can we apply our strengths so that we're really placing energy, the, en the good energy into what we're trying to achieve and we're actually enjoying the process and enjoying the journey along the way because we're playing to our strengths uh, and we're acknowledging each other in terms of what our strengths are. And so that would potentially be working really well for them and, um, and so therefore the plan's going to plan if, if you're able to plan it that way. Yeah, and I think thinking about, um, even in the workplace, it's thinking about the what do we want to achieve but the how do we want to achieve it as well? Who do we want to be whilst we're achieving this? Because um, I, I, when I worked in HR, we used, and you do performance reviews. Lots of times, people are their performance reviews are based on the what did you actually achieve? So did you meet your KPIs? Did you do everything you said you were going to do? Um, but it's also, I think, the key as well is that it can't just be about what you did. It has to be about the how you went about doing it. So if you go and you achieve all your KPIs, but you burn all the relationships you have with people as you're going along, that's not really success from what I can say. Yes, you meet the KPIs, but did you meet the values of the organisation or did you do it in a way that built collaboration? Probably not. So I think what I like about in, in the WADET model too is it, it's also about the how are you going about doing it? What approach are you going to take that will actually bring the results you're looking for? Very, very important. Absolutely. That becomes part of the evaluation process in WADET, but also part of the plan in terms of continuous improvement. And we also thought about with WADET, it was, um, and your your finishing off, 2024 and starting 2025 was actually putting in the the who the who how where when and what so when you're thinking about setting those goals um <clears throat> and thinking about what do you want to be doing and how you know what what is it that you want to be doing was also adding in the who can help you with this or who needs to be involved in this so that you're connecting in all the parts to it. How will you go about doing this? Where? Where where will this make a difference? Where would you like to be? When? And then the when links you into that accountability and action that drives into the, well, what will the goal be? Absolutely. I think, you know, and I, I talk about it often, the who, what, where, when, how, you know, those questions as your question starters uh, from a coaching perspective to really build on those open and curious questions for self and for others um, to really design a really clear, balanced plan around how you're going to approach something, you know, and you notice, um, I notice you, we've got the why there with the, with the Red Cross through it. And I always um, talk about being mindful as to when we use why. Uh, you know, keep it open and curious. The why could cause some defensiveness if we ask uh, that question too early in conversations where people feel defensive. You know, why haven't you done it yet? For example, um, could could break rapport. So we tend to leave those why questions for those more inner level five. You know. Um, questions where we've got rapport with why is that important to you as an example might be a better why question but we shift it away so we can focus on who you know who can help you what is it that I need to achieve how am I going to get there uh, how am I going to approach it you know where do I get the support or resources when am I going to do this part that part that part whatever it might be so you're really asking yourself and others good quality questions to design that plan and to get really clear around where you want to be and how you're going to go about it yeah so I think it's sort of like the often people um rush into their to goal setting because they they've got one thing and they go okay I'm going to set my goal on that and and off they go um and instead of doing this pre, it's sort of like the pre-work before you get to the goal setting because when you really nut, nut out what it is that you want, it actually helps to guide the what your goal is in the end. And because so someone will say, oh, you know, I want to lose weight or I want to get fit, that actually, tend, that's not necessarily the higher level goal. 
Mm. And so without doing the, the WADEP or the in-depth analysis, if you, you, I mean, it's a reasonable goal. It's just that it's not the higher level goal that will drive, that will yield the bigger the bigger results and have you won't have had a really good think about what it is that you want. Absolutely. And asking the question, you know, what will that give you? And what will be the benefit if? So those sorts of questions that really allow you to think of the bigger picture in terms of what's that going to offer me? What will that mean for me if I'm able to do this part? What what you think is the actual goal? So in that in turn, we'll build that momentum and that desire to want to achieve these things. So looking at those big picture goals are really valuable and really important to the process. Yeah, when you get team members who come in and say, I want to do something, um, it, these are really great questions to ask to understand how they got to the something they want to do and then help them to think about have that have they thought about all the things they need to think about um, because it, I think it, it leads to that quality decision making um, which then leads to that ownership and the choice so you're making this choice knowing that you've thought about as much as you can. So when you link that through, people are more likely to reach those goals because they've put the thought in at the beginning and then and it's something that's genuine and important to them. Yes, absolutely. All right. So um, that was that was our approach uh, to thinking about finishing the year off strong, um, thinking about goal setting for 2025 thinking about prioritising that balance and moving away from I've just got to get to to being able to really think to enjoy the process as you're going along and recognising um, what you're doing in there. Yeah. Okay, so the where to from here, we have got um, our Certificate for in Workplace and Business Coaching and Diploma of Organisational Coaching programs for next year. So they are, going, we've finished off our public programs for this year and we've got um, sessions for next year. We, as always, we've Executive and Senior Leader Coaching, Mentor Coaching Programs and Mediation Services. Bridget, I would like to thank you so very much for joining me today. I always learn so much from you. Always a pleasure, Paula. Thank you. Um, we do have one more co uh, coaching cafe for this year and that will be next week, which will be looking at um, the highlights from this year as well as the trends that we started and we'll see if the trends that we predicted are actually the trends that came through. Um, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. We absolutely loved having you with us um, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Enjoy your weekend. Same.